um, which uh, Rion and Eugene are going to present on on living next door to Kruger, <laughs> which is um, so they they live and work in a town called Palaborva, which is very close to where I am at the moment in Hootsbreit. Um And yeah, they're going to be telling us a bit about the work that they do and also on the topic of urban wildlife, they've also started um, a Facebook group called the Urban Wildlife Awareness um, in Palo Borba, where they're actually encouraging people to be more wildlife friendly. And um, they're going to tell us a bit more about that uh, this evening. So over to you guys. You should unmute yourselves. <laughs> We're going to do that now. There we go. There we go. Well done. Cool. So we can just start screen sharing, eh? Yes. Yep. Yeah, you can just start. Got it. Let's do that. Right. So, any day now? <laughs> so. Very honest, there we go. Technical difficulties. There we go. Oh, well, good. Right. Evening, everybody. My name is Eugene. Um, so Rion and I, together, we started Urban Wildlife Awareness Palabora. Um, we're going to talk, the first section of the, the, the talk will be on Urban Wildlife Awareness Palabora, and then later where we have started a sister operation, which is called Palabora Natural Heritage Foundation. So the first section I'm going to handle um, so this just shows you conserving wildlife outside of protected areas, stuff that we've had to do to, to get people involved. Um, this is just to show you where the Kruger National Park and then the private nature reserves are situated. And that shows you that little stars where Palabora, where we are. So we, in actual fact, that map is not that accurate. We are surrounded by protected areas and um, certain areas that are not, that don't have protected status, but that literally border uh, the residential areas where you have large wildlife species. You've even got um, big five species roaming around. Right, so we started Urban Wildlife Awareness Palabora. And for a small town, currently we're standing on 435 members. It's not a lot, but uh, you'll see quite a few familiar faces there. I think the first on the those little circles with the people is actually uh, Megan's uh, profile. So quite a few people from the BDI are on here and we regularly have BDI posts being shared on there to create awareness. So what we, um, we did outing, we took the uh, members of the public out to go and do reptile surveys and well, we covered various taxa. This one was actually a reptile survey um, in the middle of town. We've got a nice uh, big copy in the center of town. So this was our very first uh, outing that we did, photographing some snakes. And since then, we've actually taken out some uh, TV and film crews to various areas in the town. Um, here we did a tree identification course. Over here, we did some tree tagging in a local area that, uh, that we want to try and get control over the management of that area because it's situated in the center of town, it has such a rich cultural heritage and the tree species that we've got surrounding it is just, it's, it's really nice. It's something that you don't find all over the place here. Right, so then what we did, project that we started is creating a species list for Palabora. So we started just with animals. Recently, we, uh, we started to add the trees after being asked by one of our local Ledet um, members. So that Ledet is the Lepopo uh, nature conservation, basically. So currently we're standing on 847. Um, you'll see that the trees are only 37, so we haven't added a lot of plants yet. So, and this is just for, for Palabora itself in town. Uh, the mammals, I can add, we've had four of the big five in there. Um, and then on the mammals, we haven't even really started to touch the rodents. Most of the, rodent, the rodents, we haven't even really done yet. So that, that number is still gonna go up. Um, Fish, we've only got one, so we still need to do a fish survey. Mollusks, uh, dragonflies and damselflies, there's still a lot that we need to add. Lacewings and antlions, scorpions, spiders, uh, solifuge, whip spiders. So there's still a lot that we, that we need, but this already is a more detailed species list than quite a few reserves that I'm aware of. And we used Vimus 
to gather a lot of the data where people would log sightings and so citizen science has actually aided in creating the species list. So Rihanna and myself, we do biodiversity surveys, we take people out and some of our outings we found some really nice interesting species. So over here we've got the African bullfrog, over here we've got bubbling casina, um, then the water lily reef, reed frog and brown-backed tree frog. Then we've got some nice butterflies, uh, Natal brown, the bush scarlet, two pip policemen and a uh, azure hair streak, I think. So all of these have been logged. Everything that we photograph and that we log, we uploaded onto Venus as well. Then some dragonflies, Odonata. We did an Odonata survey, which was quite cool. Um, we managed to, uh, to get 25% of all the Odonata species that occur in South Africa in just seven days, 33 hours on foot. Um, in potentially dangerous uh, game areas, we did the Willyfonts River, Salati River, and PMC Mine Dams. And uh, yeah, so 25% of all Odonata that occur in South Africa in seven days, in 33 hours, just around Palabora. But it's outside of Palabora, so most of those species cannot be added. We have got some like the brown dusk orca, I think, which was only the, I think it was less than five uh, times that it has been spotted in South Africa. And that is one that we, that we actually got here. So some of the nice species that we've got here, we've got the red basker, the yellow veined widow, uh, slender pintail, and this is quite a nice one, an elegant drop wing. So up until recently, it was thought that the elegant drop, drop wing just occurred on the Sabi River but uh, we actually found this one on the Willyfons River. Right, Rion, over to you. Cool, so as, as Eugene uh, mentioned, uh, Palabora Natural Heritage Foundation is, is kind of, it's the sister organization and the more official uh, foundation, which we are busy registering as a NPC, a non-profit company. It's basically like a non-profit organization. This, this has been started specifically to take on much larger projects. And as you will see shortly now, a large focus here is, is anti-poaching, uh, which is a massive problem. So much higher level projects here. Um, it doesn't always include members of the community because of the, the danger involved and the working and the doing the anti-poaching and stuff in the big five areas. And when I talk about these big five areas, these are big five areas, as Eugene mentioned, actually outside of Kruger National Park, but which uh, our areas around with the surrounding properties, specifically the mining properties around um, around Palabora that are open uh, indirectly to Kruger National Park and Big Five roam freely backwards and forwards. Massive need to to try and look after these things because they they seeing their backside a little bit with um, snaring operations. So that's Palabora National Heritage Foundation PN, PNHF. Please go leave a like so you can stay up to date with 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 what we are busy with. Um, so as I said, sorry for the gory photos, there are a couple, uh, just look down, close your eyes or go grab a coffee uh, or a healthy snack and beverage as one of the YouTubers say. Um, but this is one of the typical things that we get snaring. Oh, it's a big problem and it's kind of been not, it, it hasn't been looked at um, over a decade or even more. Um, this is a, the, the foot of a giraffe. Um, and basically what we do in the areas we call nature conservation together, we've got uh, we call them uh, veterinarians together, uh, veterinarians like uh, uh, Rita, Dr. Rita Piso from Mangara, Mangata Veterinary Services. And we get a team together, usually on short notice, and we go and remove snares of, 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 of animals, um, often on private ground or government. Uh. Okay, so this is that specific animal in question. And as you can see, we, we do every so often do get the public involved. Um, to assist with these uh, with these ventures. One of the other things, one of the very, very large projects we have been busy with in the last couple of months is actually removing snares off of six hyenas that have snares uh, from one clan, a single clan. And this is just outside of town. Uh, these hyenas are often spotted, hyenas are often seen by members of the public. And this is actually where uh, this specific individual was the, the individual that started off this whole thing as where the people reported this specific individual. She's the matriarch um, of the clan. She's got two young cubs. And as you can see on this uh, photograph here, she, she had a snare around her neck. Um, but this project specifically, because they're such difficult animals to get a hold of, to, <clears throat> to dart, uh, they're so canny. Um, 
we've this project has also been going for six months now um, and we still have a couple of individuals uh, that's roaming around with SNES that we really we're trying hard we're trying to keep our eyes and ears on the ground so we can remove those this is a different individual this is actually a male you can see the snare was around the mouth i'm not going to stand still for too long on this and there's some of the team nature conservation committee members of palaborva natural heritage foundation and then uh, dr uh, rita pisa there in the center from Angata, from Angata vets other things we get involved is this was the replacement of an elephant collar this collar was fitted by elephants alive uh, probably the most well-known elephant conservation uh, uh, NPO, I think they are, NGO, to be safe. Um, so we've assisted with things like this. This elephant's collar, collar had to be replaced. The data from these collars, uh, many postgraduate students uh, use, these, uh, use this data to, um, yeah, for, their, for their projects to study the movement ecology, nutrient um, uptake from elephants uh, in the local area, in the Palaborwa area. And a lot of these elephants, as Eugene mentioned before, these animals move from, between, from Kruger National Park, associated private nature reserves like Lasiri, Timbavati, Baluli, these well-known areas, and into town often, and close to town and onto mining properties. And often then, you know, uh, sand parks and those guys are not involved, and you need to, you need to have some local people involved to, to assist with these uh, projects. Now, there's just the size of the, uh, the collar of the elephant. Eugene was uh, available there. This was a warthog snare, once again, snare around the neck. Um, this was reported by a local resident who's got a, uh, a, a, a small 21 hectare plot outside. And so we often, as I mentioned before, get people together very quickly and we manage to relieve this, this animal of quite a bit of uh, suffering. And then some of the other things we get involved with, it's a bit gory. I'm going to move on to this one quickly. You can see a leopard on the left hand side. It's been darted. There's the snare in the middle, lion on the right hand side, ugly photographs. And just to move on to that quickly, uh, not to spend too much time on that, that animal. And as you've seen already from the hina and the lion photographs, a lot of animals get snared through here and often the carnivores get snared around the mouth. It's, it's very cruel. It's terrible. Um, so that lion actually uh, was around our area and it got chased by staff member from a local lodge across the river and actually in the associate private uh, nature reserves i think Clasieri, if i'm not mistaken yeah, the animal was tracked down and they managed to remove the snare but as you can see from those photographs that's not the damage the snare did but actually the damage the, the amount of tissue that had to be cut off by the veterinarian and actually stitched up again so the final result looks much better than what you saw there but that's the type of stuff that is that's actually commonplace here around us and as i've mentioned it's it's it's, it's kind of been uh, it hasn't been looked at and uh, you know um, we just try and assist any authorities with, with operations like these uh, and the great thing about this all the snares we remove uh, go to a company called down to the wire they make jewelry from the snares there you can see my, I'm wearing one Eugene's wearing one there's some um, uh, on the screen there in front of you so go find them on Facebook and Instagram so down to the wire they make lovely jewelry copper or, uh, or, or, or metal from the snares that we remove and these funds uh, then fund again further conservation projects. So it's, it's, it's a good cause uh, to go and invest in uh, a set of jewelry from down to the wire. The details will be left at the end of this slideshow. This is some of the more larger operations. You can see these are very experienced anti-poaching units. Um, we are basically a small little civilian team going out together with these guys. And there you can see what 98 or 95 snares were removed in an area where there's actually a, a, a couple of syndicates operating. Um, so this is a typical operation where we won't get the public so much involved because of the, uh, you know, the danger involved. Not only the animals, the big five and a lot of buffalo and elephant around us, but also uh, the fact that we've, you know, we're chasing down poachers um, that often um, enter the area and that we often encounter. So from this group, we've got Classieri, Associated Private Nature Reserves, Anti-Poaching Units, and anti-poaching units um, we've got some american colleagues here we've got um, we in the in the last exercise we have sandifs the south african national defense forces were assisting us and then obviously the local nature conservation provincial nature conservation authority uh, in this specific snare we sweep we actually employed some dogs as well to track down some of these poachers and that just gives a little bit of perspective the amount of snares that we remove most of them are, as you can see are made from cable which is it's impossible basically for an animal to remove a piece of cable very strong 
um, lightweight material from made from spring steel. And then obviously one of the big things is, you know, we try and report on these things in the local newspapers. Um, this was a, another different snare sweep. This one actually occurred inside of town where we actually, with this snare sweep, we in included um, a lot of our members from the Urban Wildlife Awareness Palaborwa team. But uh, we are, we're very big on communicating this to the local public so everyone is aware of what's going on inside that town. And then one of the other things we're also involved, another project we're starting to look at at the moment with the assistance from a, a couple of stakeholders as we've also now, just like with Cape Town, we've got baboon problems. And, uh, you know, we also started, we, we stepped in now and we are busy working on a baboon monitoring project to prevent any conflict between uh, animal uh, humans and pets and then uh, the baboons, which are especially causing trouble now um, during the winter season when food is a bit scarce in the bush. So there we go. That's, that's us. Um, please, if, we, if you want to make any donations, I mean, a lot of this stuff happens outside of our day-to-day -day jobs. Uh, Les and them will know I work for government organization. We do these things after hours. Uh, Eugene is a guide. Um, so if you want to make any donations and stuff, pop us an email. If you just want to ask any questions, pop us an email. Like us on Facebook, Palaboro Natural Heritage Foundation. And then also please go and check out Down to the Wire for the really cool jewelry they make from it. Thanks. Yeah, thank you guys. That was awesome. Like you really do amazing work. Um, and it's, it's always so important to, you know, to make a difference there where you are and, and you guys are really achieving amazing things. And, and th thank you for, I, I didn't know about that, uh, down to the wire initiative. I've shared their, uh, the link to their Facebook page in the chat, in the zoom chat. So you guys can go take a look there um we have, have like we can take one question if anybody has a question um, anybody oh wait i see wait there's a I think there's, there's a question, question there yeah wait. i'm cute oh um so ringham says i'm curious to know how you are dealing with human wildlife conflict in the area um any destruction arising from the wildlife um human lives, livestock, agriculture. Yeah, we, we do get that. Unfortunately, um, with having especially large wildlife and potentially dangerous wildlife coming into a town, there is uh, there's human wildlife conflict. Um, there is this destruction of, of property. We had elephants, two elephants in town recently that actually broke down somebody's palisades to get to a strelitcher in the garden. <laughs> so they weren't very happy. So. Um, nature conservation is usually involved in that and they have to mitigate. Uh, so we try and assist. If they contact us and say, listen guys, we need assistance with um, a certain issue, then we try and assist. We always try and help them out. Um, so, but basically human wildlife conflict, the one that we are, are really involved in is with the baboons, trying to mitigate um, that conflict or the, the, the problems and to try and prevent the baboons from actually being destroyed which nobody wants to do. That's, that's the last thing that, that anybody wants to do. So that's the, the last option. Um, but other conflicts, it's usually Ledet that is in charge of that. Um, but we try and assist them as, as best we can. Okay. Well, well, thank you. And keep up the great work. Like, um, yeah, thank you so much for everything that you guys are doing. And, and I'm definitely going to be buying one of those bangles. It's so cool. <laughs> Um, uh, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a fantastic organization and I can tell you that uh, on Sunday we had a buffalo reported to us with a snare and the veterinarian came from Hootsprite, the entire team came from Hootsprite, it was less than two hours, the buffalo was darted back up on his feet, snare, snare removed, everything sorted, done. Awesome. And that, that's all thanks to Down to the Wire. It is, it's amazing how we work together with them, the veterinarians, us, the sponsors, everybody. So it's, it's worthwhile to, to look into them. Yeah, so it, it, is, it is worthwhile mentioning that apart from them making jewelry, they are actively involved. They're part of the core team that assists us with snare removals on, on a lot of animals. No, that's fantastic. It's really, really encouraging um, to hear about this. Um, so if you guys, if anybody else has any other questions, you can, you're welcome to send them an email 